Welcome to our lecture online. We showed you how to solve this problem the typical way, the, tra the traditional way using equations and it works quite well. We got the right answer. Let's read the problem and let's see if there's a quicker way to do this problem. All right, it says a stone is dropped from the top of the building. When it crosses a point five meters below the top, another stone starts to fall from a point 25 meters below the top. Both stones reach the bottom of the building simultaneously. The height of the building is, and G equals 10 meters per second square. Four possible answers. Now, they didn't give us the diagram. I just put it there to make it a little bit easier to work out the problem and to see what's actually happening. So stone one is dropped. And when it reaches a point five meters below from where it's dropped, a second stone is dropped 25 meters below the top, and they both hit the ground at the same time. How high is the building? Well, the way you can think about it is this way. Notice that this stone drops from a point five meters below the building, and at the very same time, a second stone then drops from 25 meters below the building, and they both hit the ground at the same time. So notice that they are 20 meters apart at this moment in time, but this one has already has some initial velocity, and, they, and this one has no initial velocity, and they both hit the ground at the same time. But the principle of falling object is as follows. If an object falls from the building, for example, any sort of building, then how far does it fall in the first second? Well, it turns out that after one second, the object is now falling at 10 meters per second because the acceleration is 10 meters per second squared. So every second it picks up an additional 10 meters per second in speed. And the average velocity, so V average, for the first second is, well, it starts at zero and it ends at 10 meters per second. So the average velocity for the first second is going to be five meters per second. That's the average velocity over the first second, which means that it will drop and let me just write one second here. So that means it will drop five meters in the very first second. Now at the end of the second second, it will now be moving at 20 meters per second, which means that the average velocity for the second second will be 15 meters per second, which means that since that's the average velocity, it will drop an additional 15 meters when it gets to this point, so the total distance dropped is now 20 meters. One second later, the object will now be moving at 30 meters per second, so that would be at the end of the third second. The average velocity for the third second would be 25 meters per second, and notice that it will therefore drop an additional 25 meters because that's the average velocity during that second, and if I add that to the 20 meters, so I get five meters, 20 meters, now I have 45 meters. And of course, this continues if the building is very tall, then after another second, it would be 40 meters per second, the average velocity would be 35 meters per second, and it would then drop another 35 meters, and at the end of the fourth second, it would now be 80 meters down. So, this is something we should all kind of have in our head, that an object will draw, drop five meters, 50 meters, 25 meters, 35 meters, and so forth, every consecutive second. So that's why the first stone will drop five meters in the first second, so one second has gone by at that point, and it will now be moving at 10 meters per second, while this rock will be starting at V initial equals zero, because it just dropped which means that this rock will always be traveling 10 meters per second faster than this rock because now they're both in free fall. They both will increase the speed at 10 meters per second every second. And so every second, this block, this ball, or this rock, it's a rock, should be moving at 10 meters per second faster than this rock. Now, since the difference in height is 20 meters, how fast will this rock catch up this rock? Well, if it's moving at 10 meters per second for two seconds, or I should say, if it's moving 10 meters per second faster than this rock, then it will take two seconds to reach from there to there. In other words, for this, this rock to catch up the, first, the second rock. So that means that one second has gone by here, and an additional two seconds have gone by by the time rock one hits the ground, 
and two seconds will have gone by for this rock to hit the ground. So a total of three seconds will have gone by for the first rock to hit the ground. So after three seconds, we drop 45 meters, and that is answer A. So this is actually a quick way. You can actually very quickly write the numbers down. You go 5, 15, 25, 35, add them up, realizing that the distance between this rock and this rock is 20 meters. When this one is dropped and this one is already moving at 10 meters per second, so this one is moving at zero, this one is moving at 10 meters per second, it will take two seconds for this rock to catch this rock, and that means the total drop time for rock one is three seconds, so in three seconds it will drop a total of 45 meters. That's the height of the building. That's a little quicker way, and you don't have to worry about the equations. And that is how it's done the quick way. Well, I'm trying to explain it, but you can actually do this quick.